No one in this room, I think, I may be wrong, but no one in this room will ever stand on the moon. But we all can share the results of scientific research. We all can benefit in our sense of what kind of world we're living in. Uh, we have seen over the centuries a gradual demystification of the world and a gradual dawning recognition that we are not at the center of things, that the universe is not a cosmic drama in which we are given a starring role. It starts with uh, Pico Brahe observing that probably the stars are suns like our own and have planets like our own sun, and there may be living things on those other planets, and there may be nothing special about our own solar system. Uh, he was burned for his pains. In the 1920s, it was realized that uh, our galaxy, the hundreds of, mil well, hundreds of billions of stars, is not the whole universe, that there are other island, island universes of stars, hundreds of billions of stars, that we see in the sky as spiral nebulae, and that there's nothing particularly special about our galaxy. It's just one of the vast number of galaxies. And now, with the latest speculations in cosmology, we even have the idea, which is by no means well established, but is a possibility, and does appear in some of the most uh, attractive theories, that our Big Bang is nothing special. It's just another bang in a universe in which Big Bangs go on sporadically all the time uh, due to a instability in the equations of motion, of matter, and that uh, there's nothing special about ours except that by chance it happens to have the right properties, the right vacuum energy and the right constants of motion and so on so that life can arise and we can wonder about it. So the world once seemed mysterious. It seemed that there was a nymph in every brook and a dryad in every tree. Because how else could you explain the way the world worked? Everything seemed utterly beyond our understanding unless there were personalities out there doing things, making fire, making thunder. And as science has progressed, we've learned not only that we are not at the center of things, but that there is no need to assume any personalities out there uh, working to make things go. We understand the way work, nature works in an impersonal way. Um, but I think perhaps the greatest impact that this kind of scientific research may have, and I hope will have, on the public is not for the knowledge so it produces, important as that is, but for the model it provides of the way of seeking truth. Our science, not just cosmology, but all of science, uh, offers an example of a way of knowing. It's tentative. We, we don't ever speak of sure and certain knowledge. Uh, some things become very well established. There's a consensus view now of the Big Bang. But we admit it might be wrong. And when we get to earlier times, to the period of inflation, and even back before then, to the quantum origins of the universe, we admit we're speculating. Uh, no one is burned at the stake for opinions about cosmology. And there's some people with very peculiar opinions. Uh, our knowledge is based on observation and reason. It's self-correcting. It's also culture-free. The cosmology that's studied in my country and yours is the same as the cosmology that's studied these days in Japan and India. We don't have different, we don't have a cosmological truth for you and a cosmological truth for him and a cosmological truth for someone else overseas. Uh, we are uncertain about our truths, but we're all working toward a common truth, which is not something that is an outgrowth of our culture, but is the way it is because that's the way the world is. It is universal. And above all, we have an attitude toward authority, which the world could well emulate. We have heroes in science. In my own field of physics and cosmology, we have heroes like Albert Einstein, 
uh, Edwin Hubble, who discovered the expansion of the universe, uh, many other these heroes who built the MAP satellite uh, and sent it out and did these marvelous observations, Penzias and Wilson, who discovered the microwave background. We have lots of heroes of larger or, or smaller stature, but they're not prophets. They're not people whose words we remember and go back to for guidance in our scientific research. No one today reads Einstein's scientific papers, except for historical interest. Any graduate student here at the University of Waterloo or in the perimeter, any postdoc at the Perimeter Institute understands general relativity better than Einstein did. Because our subject is a cumulative one. And much as we honor Einstein, no one would dream of settling a scientific dispute by asking, what did Einstein say about this? The world, I think, in other words, we have our heroes, but we don't have prophets. And I think looking at the state of the world today, of the people who are willing to kill each other because of religious certainty, because of books that were written thousands of years ago, uh, supposedly by God, the Koran, the Bible, looking at the way the world has benefited from its prophets. I would say the example of science is a good one, that we need more heroes and fewer prophets. Thank you.